Hey, good morning. Today is day 20 of our 31 day challenge where we are studying together the book of Proverbs. So turn with me, if you would, to Proverbs 20. And I've entitled this chapter Wisdom's Counsel. The word counsel is mentioned a couple times in Proverbs 20. And specifically, you see it in verse number five. Verse five explains that wisdom's counsel is like deep water. And the water is way down at the bottom of the well, and it's going to take some work to draw it out. But the wisdom we gain is absolutely worth the work. Certainly, there's been some work involved in studying the book of Proverbs together, as we have. But I want to commend you for your faithfulness to join me day after day, because wisdom will be our reward. So what is wisdom's counsel trying to tell us from Proverbs 20? Among other things, wisdom's counsel is saying, don't be a meddling fool and cease from unnecessary strife. We see that in verse number three. This chapter is full of things that people meddle with that cause them unnecessary strife. It's full of warnings about those things. And the first one is don't meddle with wine. It's in verse number one. Intoxicating beverages are the drink of a fool. It's foolish physically because it often leads to liver disease. And it's, of course, empty calories, which just makes you fat. Based on those reasons and others, it's poor stewardship for your physical body. Not only physically, but it's also foolish mentally. Imbibing in intoxicating beverages quickly produces cognitive impairment, and of course it can be dangerously addictive. So it's foolish physically, mentally, but also it's foolish socially. Alcohol makes a person loose socially. Their inhibitions are released, and, and morally that doesn't lead to a good place. It's the drink of a fool physically, mentally, socially, and morally. And you can see verses right now on your screen that'll give you additional biblical information about the dangers of intoxicating wine. So God is saying, don't meddle with intoxicating beverages because it only brings you strife. Secondly, don't meddle with authority. Verse 2 and verse 8 and verses 20 and 21 give us this principle. It's unwise to provoke your authority to anger, whether it's civil authority like a king or it's an employer as your authority or maybe it's your parents. The text is saying you sin against your own soul when you unnecessarily provoke an authority. And verse number eight is very interesting to me. All the king, the authority, has to do is look at someone who is doing evil and then they'll stop. That's what the verse is teaching. It reminds me of when a police officer is on the road and people maybe previously were speeding and all of a sudden everyone around him is now doing the speed limit. His presence in that area encourages compliance. And verses 20 and 21 discuss the importance of honoring parental authority. And sometimes all the parent has to do is make eye contact with his child and that child will change their behavior. The chapter is saying, don't meddle with authority and you'll avoid strife. But then thirdly, don't meddle with your future. And verses 4 and verse 13, they're connected. They explain the danger of being a sluggard and the wisdom in preparing for your future. And verse 13 says, open thine eyes. Stop sleeping. Wake up. Open your eyes and work hard and you'll avoid poverty. Don't meddle with your future. Set aside for the future now so you're not the one begging when harvest time comes. If you want something tomorrow, You've got to work for it today. That's what the text is teaching. But then fourth, don't meddle with self-proclamation. And verse number six says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. In other words, don't stop serving to tell people what a good servant you are. Just stay faithful to the tasks that God has called you to accomplish. After all, verse number nine asks, Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure, from my sin. It's a foolish thing to proclaim your own goodness when you yourself know that you're a sinner. Don't meddle with self-proclamation because that pride leads to a fall and it creates strife. Be the faithful and humble person who has become increasingly hard to find. And then fifth, don't meddle with untrustworthy people. Verses 10 and 23 remind us to avoid crooked merchants. This idea of diverse weights and measures was mentioned in Proverbs 11.1. 1. Beware of people trying to hustle you for money. Clearly, they're untrustworthy. 
And also don't meddle with uh, the con man and the strange woman described in verse number 16. She's the promiscuous female that's been being described throughout the book of Proverbs. And notice again the word meddle now in verse number 19. Don't meddle with a talebearer because he will reveal your secrets. He or she is an untrustworthy person. These types of untrustworthy people may have gotten the better of you at some point in the past. Their deception may have seemed sweet to them at the time, but the long-term consequences for them are like eating gravel, is what verse 17 says. The Lord will deal with that. Wisdom's counsel is saying, don't be a meddling fool and cease from unnecessary strife. Don't meddle with wine or with your authorities or with your future or with self-proclamation. And don't meddle with untrustworthy people. If you're meddling with these things, it's very likely that you're facing a life full of avoidable strife. Again, wisdom's counsel is, you don't have to be a meddling fool. I encourage you to obey wisdom's counsel and do it for your own sake. And please, if you would, comment below and let me know what the Lord taught you from Proverbs 20. And don't forget to check out tomorrow's video, which will explain aspects of Proverbs 21. I sincerely hope that your day today is free from unnecessary strife and that it's filled with wisdom's counsel.